hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are traveling back to the Hudson River Valley in Catskills. And I know that I've been doing a kind of video series on my travels to this part of the world, and I'll leave all of them linked down below. But in this video, I wanted to do a roundup video of eight incredible places to see and enjoy in both the Catskills and the Hudson River Valley region. So if you are planning a trip to this area and you're looking for some inspiration, look no further because you can check out all the great places that I went to and I loved. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the first place that I wanted to talk about is Beacon, New York. And I absolutely loved Beacon, New York. It's a town that's known for a blend of history, art, and just natural beauty. We started our day in the scenic Hudson's Long Dark Park, Long Duck Park, say that five times fast. And what I would say about this is it, it sounds a bit confusing where I'm like, hey, let's go to Beacon, New York, and we're gonna go to Hudson's Long Dark, I can't say it, I just can't say it, guys. I'm like, I'm crumbling here. Long Duck Park. And um, yeah, so in Beacon, there is this incredible park that's on the water. It's a 19 acre waterfront area. It's been refurbished. And now it's a place for like kayaking, fishing, picnicking, scenic walks. They have rehabilitated wetlands and meadows. And it's just a really lovely spot to spend the day, especially if you love being by the water. Then another place I would recommend going to is DIA Beacon. Now, unfortunately on the day that we went, we couldn't actually go inside, but I was the friend who has a house locally and just kept telling me how incredible it is. So I've got to put it on my list so it's in there and if you can go on a day that it's open you should because everyone says it's fantastic now other things to do in beacon we loved strolling the main street i'm a walker i'm a city girl at heart and this is a very lengthy main street it has lots of unique shops restaurants historic buildings i loved grabbing an iced latte from big mouth coffee roasters we checked out Hudson Beach Glass as well, too. So Hudson Beach Glass actually sells their own wares, but they also do glass blowing demonstrations and workshops. So if we had had a bit more time, I think this would have been a fantastic activity to do. But for those of you that have a sweet tooth like I do, you should definitely check out Hudson Valley Marshmallow. They have so many incredible flavor combinations of marshmallows. So I feel like that would be a great souvenir. And I also personally bought some chocolates at Hakan Chocolatier, which is a Swedish chocolatier. They have so many cool flavors and I think this just makes for a great gift. So if you've got like friends, family, colleagues, kids um, that would love like a gourmet chocolate, this is a great spot. For lunch, we went to Tito Santana Taqueria which just had like really casual but delicious Mexican food. And then after that, we finished at Matcha Thomas, which I don't know about you, but I love matcha. And it's just such a zen chill atmosphere in there. They have all the different dairy and non-dairy milks, and they also even do the matchas with water. So very like authentic matcha place if you love matcha like I do. But yeah, just such a great town and I would definitely recommend a stop here. So after Beacon, my recommendation number two would be to go to Ben Marl Winery. Ben Marl Winery is lovely, and very sadly, we went on a day that was just not the greatest weather, but you know what? Sometimes when I travel, we have a rule that if the weather does not cooperate, go treat yourself to like a cheeky cocktail or a glass of wine, and it's exactly what we did at Ben Marl. It's not far from Beacon, and it claims actually to be the oldest winery in America. Now, when I posted this video on YouTube earlier, someone did say to me there's another winery not too far away from there that also claims the same thing. Ben Marl claims that they have, I think, winery license, um, winery or vineyard license number one in the country. So we'll let the two of them duke that out, but Regardless of that, go and I recommend pre-booking. 
Um, I went with a friend who has a membership there who's a local, so we didn't have to pre-book, but I think the etiquette is you should pre-book. You can go for a beautiful wine tasting experience with their small batch wines. We had a delightful Pinot Noir, a Saval Blanc Rosé, Reserve Riesling, and the staff is just so knowledgeable. They guide you through the tasting and it just made for such a memorable visit despite the really, really crappy weather outside. My recommendation number three to check out would be the Wildflower Farms Resort. Now, this could be a place that you stay at on your trip. It is a bit of a splurge in terms of hotel prices, but they have a lot of really interesting accommodation options, especially if you're traveling as a family. So it might actually make sense versus like a solo travel situation, but I'll leave it linked down below if you wanna check out and check it out and check out the prices because it is just such a beautiful, oh, like calming oasis. There's so many wonderful activities they do at this resort for all age groups. So I feel like it would be the kind of place you could go to with your family. There'd be something for everyone, but you might also meet some really cool people along the way. Now we just booked in for dinner, which is also a great hack. And obviously you could look at their activities list and ask if non-guests can go. I do not know the etiquette on that because we did not try. But as mentioned, we did go for dinner and it is just incredible. It's a farm to table concept and the restaurant is called Clay, and we got to just have this incredibly gourmet dinner. Oh my gosh, I think it was ideally, like I would say probably my favorite meal of the entire trip. It was that good. So if that's not a recommendation, I do not know what is. My recommendation number four is also another like chic resort in a slightly different area. It's a bit closer to the Catskills, it's called Ines. And this is also just a stunning resort. It is pricey to stay at, but it's also a members club as well too. So a lot of locals have memberships there because you can go and like bring your computer there. They have beautiful restaurant, they have beautiful grounds. So there's a lot of ways you can experience this as well. We decided to make a reservation and go for breakfast, which was a wonderful way to start the day out. And I just think it's just, it's rustic, it's sophisticated, and the brunch food was fantastic. I had this breakfast sandwich with like, it was just massive with a capital M with like eggs and bacon and cheese and, Yum, 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 yum. I mean, living over in Europe, when I go back to America, I'm just reminded how big the portion sizes are, but you know what? I was not complaining because it was delicious. And we also got to sit on the outdoor terrace, take in the lush greenery, the beautiful manicured grounds. This resort would also definitely be on my bucket list to come back and stay at. Now, my tip number five is where we went after Innis, and it is Minnewaska state park preserve now this is a place you could really spend a lot of time at and it has 35 miles of carriage roads and 50 miles of footpaths so it makes it perfect for hiking and biking now we did not go the weather i just was not blessed with great weather on this trip but my friend really wanted to show it to me because they just recently, I think within the past year or two, redid their visitor center. And the visitor center is like a mini museum. So you definitely need to go and check it out, um, especially if you have kids because it's really educational, it's interactive. It just makes for a great way to orient yourself as well as to where you wanna go within the state park. So I really recommend it for that and like near the, well, the visitor center has great bathrooms, number one, so that's always important to point out. But number two, you're within very short walking distance to this incredible body of water with beautiful views. So if you're with people that aren't as able-bodied with walking and you just wanna get a taste and flavor, like doing the visitor center and then going for like a really short little walk on the gravel paths would be a great hack. Now, my tip number six is to go to the town of New Paltz, New York. This is such a cool college town, but it also has a rich history to it. And essentially, the town is home to 
this Huguenot street. It's like a historic Huguenot village. So it gives you a really wonderful look into that period of time, which is not without its scandal and controversy because um, the Huguenots themselves were a persecuted group. Uh, I think they, um, because of their religion, they were persecuted, but then they came to America and also had slaves. The town and the street doesn't shy away from that history. They talk to you about it. They tell you what happened, how they treated their slaves, what role this plays in kind of the slave trade, slave history in America, but they also tell the history of the Huguenots, like their religious persecution as well. You get to actually see how they lived. They have an authentic, like recreated wigwam there as well. They have a historic cemetery. It's really interesting to see the juxtaposition of this vibrant kind of hippie college town mixed in with this level of history. And then of course, in addition, you can enjoy the college town. And we had a lovely time. There's, um, really some really nice like little restaurants and cafes for example we went to um this really cute chocolate shop which is called i think lagusta's luscious we got really lovely iced coffees there and we treated ourselves to some chocolates and sweets there um, and then we also went to another place just for like a little um my friend got a mocktail, I had a glass of rosé, but it's funny, it's like you know you're in a college town when your glass of rosé is like served in a pint glass, <laughs> which just made me laugh a little bit. My seventh recommendation of where to go and check out is a place called Bashakill Vineyard and Winery. And this place is just a really wonderful local farm to table, um, basically vineyard and winery. They make their own wines, they're vegan, and they also have like these infusions with some of their wines as well. Um, they also, I think, do like some craft beers and cocktails and mocktails as well. And they have incredible farm to table food. So this is really great for, um, you know, many members of like your group, whether they're drinking, not drinking, just want food. They do live music on some days. So you should definitely go on the website and check their schedule of events. But I just really loved the vibe and energy of this place. And the food was really, really outstanding. And I believe that this is like an adults only place. So this is not like a family spot, just to be a uh, fair warning. Um, and I should also mention that it's located in the Bashakill Nature and Wetland Preserve, which also has like tons of hiking, I think, um, and other options there too. So I'll make sure to leave all the links down below so you can check it out some more. But I guess, you know, maybe you want to go on a hike and like have a glass of wine or a beer after. I don't hate that for you and some delicious food. Sounds fun. And then last but certainly not least, my eighth and final recommendation is Hudson, New York. And Hudson, I mean, you know, when you're talking about Hudson River Valley, this is, I mean, such a great town. It's actually become such a popular tourist attraction and it has um, a really eclectic and fabulous main street, um, a little like kind of similar vibes to Beacon, um, but maybe like a bit more with like furniture shops, but also great restaurants, some funky boutiques as well. And, it's also just like a really great long main street to go check and have a stroll, which I love. We went there for dinner. So we went to the Maker Hotel, which would be another great place to stay. It's also um, a like very fabulous, um, expensive kind of boutique hotel. We went there for after dinner drinks, actually, sorry. I'm like losing the plot here. I'm talking to you about it in reverse, but we went for a cocktail after dinner. You could also book in for dinner here, which the restaurant just looked so atmospheric and fabulous. But where we actually went was the Rivertown Lodge. Um, it's called the Tavern. And that was also, I think like my second favorite meal of the whole trip. So good, again, like farm to table, local cuisine, fresh, innovative kind of menu. We sat on their terrace, really great service, just like really great vibes all around. So I would highly recommend it. Um, and then also maybe go for an after dinner drink at the Maker Hotel and just um, maybe get there a bit earlier in the day so you could pop in and out of like 
really more of like the furniture shops, the antique shops that this area is really known for. So yeah, with that said, that wraps up my Hudson River Valley and Catskills video. These are just the places that I went to that I loved. As mentioned, I have a friend who's a local in the area that has a house. So my friend lovingly curated some of her favorite spots for me and now I'm passing it, passing it all around to you. I'm sure there's some wonderful spots that we missed. So as always, I always say sharing is caring here on this channel. Leave comments down below. Where else do you love to go to in the Catskills or the Hudson River Valley? Like share all the tips because people who are watching this video are obviously planning a trip and we can help them out and make sure their trip is incredible. If you like this video, please hit the like button. That means the world to me. And it also shows me what kind of videos you wanna see more of. And then last but not least, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. I make travel and lifestyle videos on YouTube. As mentioned, I have a whole series on the Hudson River Valley and the Catskills. So if you wanna see all the places that I went to more in depth, I'm gonna leave them all linked down below so you can travel virtual, virtually with me and see like every single place we went to, bit more detail on all of them, and hopefully that will help you in your travel planning journey. So thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you soon.